morning. Will you please join me for the call to worship? People of God, today we begin our journey through Lent, which leads us towards Easter and the open tomb. We come together to go through the door of our hearts just as Jesus would open his heart to all of us. As our hearts are open before us, let us open ourselves to the spirit that calls us now to worship. So come now, people of God, rise as you're able in body and spirit and join your voices through the journey the past set before us. God, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we rejoice and we're glad to be in it. Be with us now as we come to worship this day with you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. We are grateful that if you're worshiping with us online, we know you have other ch chances to worship with others, but we're glad you're worshiping with us this morning. If you would check in by hitting the like button on your uh, uh, like spot or leave a message in the comments box, we would appreciate it so we know that you're worshiping with us. Those of you are in person, we uh, would appreciate a, keeping a touch card and you can put those in the baskets when they come around during uh, offering. A few announcements, but welcome to Lent. We are in Lent uh, as we uh, continue on, but um, today after worship is our first Sunday of the month uh, uh, birthday and anniversary cake fellowship. So stick around for a piece of cake after uh, worship today and uh, have a little uh, fellowship. There is a board meeting this Tuesday evening um, at uh, seven o'clock. So if you wish to uh, be a part of that, um, come join us. Also today, we start our uh, Lenten offering challenge. The uh, boxes for that will, are out in the north section. You'll hear more about that during the call for offering today, but that does start now through uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, today, we, uh, as we had said last week, we are gonna start trying to introduce some new music um, during the Lenten period. Um, so during the uh, offering collection time, we uh, will probably be showing a uh, music video that has the words so you can hear the music and see the words and then um, more than likely then we will then incorporate it into worship either that same week or um, in this case it'll be uh, in next week's worship. A week from uh, now is uh, Daylight Savings, so on Saturday night, March the 12th, just giving you a heads up, set your clocks ahead one hour uh, before bed, so you're on time for church on Sunday morning, but uh, that will happen on March 12th, March 13th, that we go into the, into the springtime period. 
And then also, and you'll hear more about this during offering, um, we are starting to take orders for Easter flowers uh, for Easter. Um, those forms are either in your bulletin or out uh, in the narthex. Uh, flowers this year are $25 a plant or two for 40, um, so we can adorn the uh, sanctuary on Easter Sunday morning. And with that, it's all the announcements I have this morning, so let us hear God's word. Our Hebrew lesson this morning comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 81, verses 1 and 2 and 9. 16 taken from the inclusive Bible you who dwell in the shelter of the Most High pass the night in the shadow of Shaddai say Yahweh my refuge and my mountain fortress my God in whom I trust because you have made me your refuge you have me as your stronghold no evil will befall you and no disaster will come near your tent for I will command my angels to guard you wherever you go They'll carry you in their hands so that you don't hurt your foot on a stone. You'll tread on the young lion as easily as one does a cobra. You'll trample down both lion and serpent. Because you love me, I will deliver you. I will rescue you because you acknowledge my name. You will call upon me and I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. I will satisfy you with a long life and show you my salvation. May God bless the hearing of these words. Please rise as you are able for the reading of today's gospel. Our gospel lesson comes from Luke's gospel, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13, taking from the inclusive Bible. Jesus returned from the Jordan filled with the Holy Spirit, and she led him into the desert for 40 days, where he was tempted by the devil. Jesus ate nothing during that time, at the end of which he was famished. The devil said to Jesus, If you are God's own, command this stone to turn into bread. Jesus answered, Scripture has it, we don't live on bread alone. Then the devil took Jesus up higher and showed him all the nations of the world in a single instant. The devil said, I'll give you all the power and the glory of these nations. The power has been given to me, and I can give it to whomever I wish. Prostrate yourself in homage before me, and it will all be yours. In reply, Jesus said, Scripture has it, you will worship the Most High God. God alone will you adore. Then the devil led Jesus to Jerusalem, set him up on the parapet of the temple and said, If you are God's own, throw yourself down from here, for scripture has it, God will tell the angels to take care of you. With your hands they'll support you, that you may never stumble on a stone. 
Jesus said to the devil in reply, it also says, do not put God to the test. When the devil had finished all of this tempting, Jesus was left alone. The devil awaited another opportunity. Hear what the scripture says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Come to prayer with me this day. Beloved and Holy One, we thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made and we remind us that we always rejoice and we're glad to be in it. To be glad in you, to be glad in the experience of you that lives and breathes as you are among us. Help us God now as we come to this time of worship that we would open our hearts and open our minds, especially as we begin this Lenten journey with you. Let your spirit speak to us and that we have ears to hear and listen and act in accordance of your direction. So gracious God, it is with you that we come before you this day. And I ask you now that I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations that come from each and every one of our hearts be they ever acceptable to you. In Christ we pray, amen. amen. So this past Lent, Wednesday, Lent actually began, and it was such an awesome evening being able to worship with our siblings at uh, Christ Church, United Church of Christ, again this year. Um, it was a very moving service, and if you uh, missed that service, you can catch it online, and you can catch uh, that sermon, which actually began this entire series that we're starting. But it was also an evening for us to take time to reflect on what many of us will experience over these next 40 days. Did you know that God challenges us daily on a basis to examine the values within ourselves? And as I read through this morning's gospel, I'm seeing the devil at this point as being evil and trying to trip up Jesus. Some stories are so important that they appear in more than one gospel. And this particular story of Jesus' temptation in the wildest what wilderness, oh, we can't get words out this morning, I'm sorry, is one of those stories. Now, three different gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and we heard Luke's version, all thought this story was important that they included it at the beginning. And I'm going to say that again, that they included it at the beginning of each of their gospels. It all starts as we find Jesus being led into the desert. And in some versions, and other than being led into the desert, he was led into the wilderness where he encounters the devil. The thing is, these authors don't tell the story just because it's interesting, but they share it because it tells us something important about Jesus and Jesus' ministry. I want to take a few moments for us to learn a little bit more about Jesus here and see how Jesus responds when he was tempted by the devil, but also begin to ask ourselves 
how we are tempted and how we are empowered to act as Jesus did. This story comes right after Jesus' baptism, where the Holy Spirit comes down on him in the shape of a dove and leads him into the wilderness. If you really think about it, and throughout Jewish history, the people have struggled in the wilderness, while at the same time is where they have encountered God. Jesus, however, knew the stories of the people who struggled and who often failed having their trust in God as they wandered those 40 years out in the wilderness. But Jesus seemed to have followed in the footsteps of his ancestor Moses, who is said to have spent 40 days on a mountain with no food. Now, according to the writing of Luke, he tells us that Jesus didn't eat anything during his time away, and that Luke doesn't tell us why he didn't eat or why he was fasting. Was it a time of drought and he couldn't find any food? Was he too worried? Or was it a different reason? I'm sure the answer is not obvious, and his reason for not eating may not actually be the more important part of the story. However, what seems to be actually more important here is Luke's writing is how Jesus responded to not eating. We know that Jesus is very, very hungry, and Jesus has some company out there in the wilderness. This, however, was some unfriendly company who, were trying, who was trying to take advantage of Jesus' vulnerabilities. And that unfriendly company we know was the devil, a walking, talking manifestation of temptation hiding in the middle of reason. Who also knew that hungry people can make some terrible decisions, that this unfriendly company knew that Jesus was hungry and was tempted, so of course he took advantage of the situation. So near, now we have the devil hoping to catch Jesus in action by both questioning his identity and by offering him something that he truly needed. The devil says to Jesus, dude, if you're really the son of God, then command this stone to become a loaf of bread. I mean, come on, you're wasting away. You haven't eaten in days. You deserve this. You need this, and if you have any power, that you say you have, if that voice that has spoke to you when you were baptized is true, that if all the stories your family shares about the prophets and the angels and the stars that actually happened, then certainly you can actually do something about the pains in your belly. So why not make yourself a little something to eat, he says. It's a good thing, because God helps those who help themselves, right? But if we know Jesus, Jesus says no. Even at his stomach ached and his ribs poked through his shirt, he says no. Jesus simply states, one does not live by bread alone. He is not the son of God that he can fill his own belly. That's not what the struggle for power was. But it should be noted that he is not choosing not to make bread because he feels like he needs to suffer. Instead, he is very clear that he isn't going to use his powers foolishly and for his own gain. His power is not oriented towards himself. However, this power is other-oriented. And even though he's hungry, now is not the time to use that authority. The devil, not realizing that hunger wasn't a powerful enough struggle for temptation, tries to use this other orientation to attempt Jesus away from his mission. The devil now offers Jesus a chance to be the most powerful human on earth, to be above and beyond all these struggles for power that may be present. But think of all the good things Jesus could do if he was in charge. When we hear the devil say, you can make all the decisions and make sure everyone is cared for because you know that God's reigns needs building. We hear the devil continue to say to Jesus, why not gain a place of authority and make sure everyone builds God's mission as you see fit? The devil says, look at all these dominions of the world and I'll give you all of them. 
all the authority you would need to rule them. I can do that, you know. I can give you that. All you have to do is worship me. We hear the devil continue to say to Jesus, imagine all the good that you could do if you were just in charge of everything. And there's a lot of times that we like to be in charge of everything, and it doesn't always happen that way. Jesus, having lived under the tyranny of Rome and having watched the pettiness of local politicians, probably have dreamed of having just a loving ruler for his people. He probably knew that he could do better than the tyranny, but to become ruler, this was way was a way of great cost. So again, he says no. Jesus could not worship evil, even if it meant that later he could do good. The devil who is now frustrated after these 40 days of attempting this high quality temptation that went absolutely nowhere, had one last offer, or whatever wheeling and dealing he had up his sleeve for Jesus. Now, asking Jesus up to Jerusalem to find themselves at the very top of the temple where he says to him, if you are truly the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. You see, the devil was now quoting scripture, reminding Jesus that the writers of the Psalms said that God loves people and will protect them. So if Jesus is the Son of God, if God is calling him a special mission, then God would surely send angels to catch him before he crashed to the stones below. And such a dangerous spectacle would help Jesus prove to himself that God was indeed the one who spoke to him at his baptism. Now the devil continues as he's dealing with this power struggle and trying to trap Jesus and says, when you feel the angels lift you up, you know that you for sure are in the mission that you are undertaking that wasn't simply the madness. You can prove that God is leading you and that God will protect you. So then, why not jump? Jesus yet again says no. And he's realized that just because the devil knows how to use scripture to justify a terrible idea, it doesn't mean that Jesus has to quite literally fall for it. Now, some scriptures simply carry more weight than others and also act as the guidelines for our interpretation. And in this case, Jesus knows the guiding scripture. So instead he says, do not pull the Lord God into the test. And more importantly, with this last interaction, we can now see that Jesus finally knows and that he can fulfill the mission that God is calling him to do, even though it was dangerous. Jesus does know that saving himself from danger wasn't really the point. It's not what his authority was for. So at this point, the devil leaves, and Jesus is ready to begin his public ministry. Now, I don't know about all these other tests that the devil put Jesus through while they were out in the wilderness, but the last three tests seem to have something in common. Everywhere you look, we find examples of power struggles. The struggle of marginalized people to gain power, the struggle of those in power and in order to maintain their power. The best description I can think of is that we imagine a world without power struggles because we have that ability and opportunity to rewrite the story of our current reality of war and poverty and discrimination and violence of all kinds, but the kingdom of heavens become that new story. But for all that becomes reality, we must be willing to advocate in order to work towards which is more than a power struggle. They all seem to be related to how Jesus will use power that the Holy Spirit has borne to him. Even when it seems like he's using his authority, it might not be the worst thing in the world, like when Jesus was invited to feed, to feed himself or to become just the ruler of the earth, there is still a strong sense that there is a special authority that is not really for him. It is, however, for others, or more specifically, 
It is to be utilized in the service to others, and it is to be utilized differently <coughs> than an earthly authority that the devil has been offering to him all this time. Now keep in mind that we'll remember that later in the story that Jesus will have no problem making sure that the people of God are fed, even when he once would not feed himself. He would later feed the people because they needed food, not because he hoped that he would doing so to make them behold of him. Remember, too, the devil was looking for someone to behold him. And if you recall the story, you'll also remember that Jesus will one day become a leader, first with a few followers and then many thousands of followers. All we have to do is remember that Jesus' leadership was based on healing and teaching, not the tyranny and intimidation of an empire. We also need to keep in mind the devil was interested in the tyranny and creating these powers, and that later in Jesus' life, we'll see him return to Jerusalem as he will be encouraged to save himself from the cross. There's a scholar out there named Fred Craddock, who once wrote, the stronger you are, the more capable you are, the more opportunity you have, the more power influence you have, the greater will be your temptation. When we see Jesus being tested, we are seeing him both in his most vulnerable and seeing him leaning into his newfound strength, learning how to make the choice to follow the divine path that was led ahead of him. None of these power struggles would mean anything if Jesus wasn't able to actually succumb to the temptation. Jesus' loves prevails us. His love for God prevails and will continue to prevail even unto death. He will only use his authority to serve another. When we are tempted by the power struggles and have to be willing to make that same kind of choices in our lives. Knowing that we are chosen by Christ in the midst of the greatest temptations of his life and that we are faced with the question, how can we continue to choose him and choose to serve him? These are some of the questions that these particular story ask us. I think that's why the gospel writers shared this story because of these questions giving that they haven't been all answered in 2,000 years, we know, I don't think I can settle on any of these questions or answer them today myself. But I hope that we're willing to keep our mind that we continue to do this, to continue to keep an open mind during this Lenten season. As I said earlier, our Lenten journey began this past Wednesday, and it will take us over the next 40 days or so with Christ's journey to the resurrection. The story hasn't ended yet, and there are many power struggles ahead along the way, with many tests right behind. So we, what we need to do is we need to pray and fill with the Holy Spirit and make these important decisions in our lives, the important decisions in the right way. Blessings upon all of you this morning. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. If you haven't had a chance to fill out your green keeping in touch card please do so while I'm speaking um, praise prayer requests on the back or updates to ones that are out there right now for those of you watching online please send us an email or leave a message at the church office so that we can include those in next week's or this week's I guess it's Sunday praise and prayer requests again as pastor mentioned um, we are having the Easter flowers and lilies available it is a way to make a few dollars, a few dollars um, for the church, um, but more importantly, it's a chance to remember those loved ones that have been important in their lives or have passed during the Easter ceiling and season and to dedicate a flower maybe to one of those people that's important in your life. The 40-day Latin challenge begins. If you didn't grab a box, grab one on your way out. They're on the table in the narthex. For those of you watching online, if you'd like us to send you one, please just send an email or leave a message on the church office phone and we will certainly send one out. Giving up things for Lent, doing a Lenten challenge, 
to me the goal is that when we do these things, when you remember that you're not eating meat, if that's your choice, or when you remember that you're giving up caffeine, that when you really desire that caffeine, that it's a chance for you to recenter and remember what this Lenten season is, this 40-day journey with Jesus to the cross and what that means in our lives. So whether you're putting the change in your pocket at the end of the day into the box, if you can afford to put the single dollar bills out of your pocket into the box, if you're giving up coffee and you're gonna give the amount you would have spent for coffee and putting in the box, when you do so, I encourage you to take a moment and pray and remember why you're doing it and what this challenge actually means to you as an individual. At our time of offering, we would not be able to continue to have these church services, the online services, to do the programs. This was a very busy week for pastor between having Ash Wednesday and Theology on Tap and the Paz Spirit Group on Saturday and now church here. For a small church, we have a lot of things going on. And we're only capable of doing that because of the generosity and the gift giving from everyone. So whether you do it online, whether you send a monthly donation in, whether you put something in the plate, we appreciate it all and we promise that we'll put it to good use. As the Bassett's going around, we're going to hear the new song today on video. Please feel free to hum along if you know the song or sing quietly along if you know the song. Um, it's a chance for us to, to learn this song today and then sing it next week. I will come to you in the silence I will lift you from all your fear You will hear my voice I claim you as my choice Be still and know I am here I am hopeful strength for all the despairing, healing for the ones who dwell in shame. All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all
So as we come to the communion table this day, for those of you worshiping with us online, I invite you, if you haven't already done so, to go to your pantry and get your communion elements so you can take part in communion with us at this time. Will you all pray with me? Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts you provide of the bread and the fruit of the vine. Let the bread we break and the cup we bless speak to us of the presence of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who follow Christ's way, that we become one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. It was in that moment that Christ was gathered with all of the disciples. At the end of the meal, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and said to take and to eat. For this is my body given for you, that each time that you eat of this, do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, taking the cup from the table and blessing it, saying to them that this is the cup of my covenant of life, which is poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink from this often, and as often as you drink from this, do so in remembrance of me. And so with the bread and the cup, we remember your words dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in Christ's death and resurrection and offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Please pray with me. Led by you, we come to this table where the first fruits of redemption, the bread of life, and the cup of salvation are filled with the gifts of your spirit and offered to all who gather before you. As we are fed by the bread, may we become the generous as you, making no distinction as to who we will serve. As the cup nourishes us with your life, may we be poured out for others, feeding those who are hungry, joining the voices of the powerless, offering our living and lives in grace and hope for all. As we gather at last where you dwell, we celebrate the great feast of the first fruits of your love and grace, joining our sisters and brothers and praising you, God in community, holy in one. Amen. As we come to the table this day, I'm actually thrilled that we're able to start coming forward for communion again. It's been a, quite a long time. It's been a couple years since we've been able to come forward for communion, but we will um, we will do that under the direction of the ushers. Um, we, we do, I will take the host and do it like we do and a real brief action of prayer this day, and then um, you'll return to your seat and uh, as we continue uh, to do communion. So with that, know that the table is set, the feast is prepared, Come to the table.
now as we go out into the world of this day and each and every day, let us go out into the world through God's protection and tender mercies and care that is given to each one of us as we know it as God the Creator, God the Savior, and God the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. I invite you to sit for the post.